We want to take you to Brazil, where the Bolsonaro families continue to be harassed. But it's important to bring your attention to it because we're seeing it, and it's very similar to what's going on here in the United States against President Donald Trump. So let's talk about Brazil. Well, yesterday it was announced that the former Brazilian president, uh, Bolsonaro, and his son are under investigation for allegedly spying on its opponents. It all came after the Supreme Court granted warrants, and it's important to remember this is the Supreme Court in Brazil. Our next guest will explain to you why that's important. The Supreme Court granted these warrants two days prior, and then they were executed. Now, ultimately, the search did include uh, the former president, Bolsonaro. It also included his son, Carlos, and then it also included a councilman. Now I'm going to bring in our next guest who's going to tell you all about this and why this is so important for you to be paying attention to here in the United States. Let's bring in Paulo Figueredo. He is the journalist who is banned in Brazil, (laughs) which is honestly kind of a really good honor to have these days. Uh, I know it's not ideal though in Brazil, but it credits you a lot. And then you're also the host of your own podcast, which is available on Rumble, what I want to drag all of our audience over to and make sure you hit the like and subscribe button too. And they can find you at Real P. Figueroa as well on there. And we'll have that link at the bottom in our bio as well for this write-up on this story. Thank you, Paulo, for jumping on with us. So I wanted to get to this story with you because you've been following it, obviously. But there seems to be a lot of corruption here with the Supreme Court and their pursuit of the Bolsonaro family. So what do you make of the news that came out of Brazil yesterday? Well, Brianna, thank you uh, for having me. Uh, The situation in Brazil is unfortunately uh, escalating very rapidly. Brazil is no longer living in a democracy by any metric. Um, And uh, last week we found quite amusing to see American comedian comedian, uh, Bill Meyer uh, he was praising how Brazil protects democracy in yeah. contrast to the United States. So most people in Brazil uh, thought it, it, it had to be a joke. That had to be a joke. And I've been explaining in Brazil that that's probably indeed a joke. After all, Bill Meyer is a comedian and, and not a political commentator, uh, though he might not realize that himself. But uh, that, that's the that's the thing. Uh, and and this week, uh, we've been seeing uh, it's it's the contrast between what's been going on in Venezuela, for example, uh, because everyone, the entire world, including the United States, condemned uh, condemned Venezuela as its uh, Supreme Court rendered the main opponent of Maduro, uh, Maria Corina Machado, ineligible. Uh, she lost her political rights, the right to run against him on the ne- next election, and, and well, in in Brazil. This has already happened with Jair Bolsonaro, the main opponent of Lula da Silva, our sitting president. Uh, This happened like early last year. And now uh, we have been having rumors and strong rumors about Bolsonaro's probably arrest, probably is going to be arrest uh, soon, Um, uh, to the point that Lula, Lula's current wife recently said in a speech that if all goes well, Bolsonaro will be in prison. So and, and and it might seem it seems that she might be right because uh, Lula appointed a, a more um, f- friendly attorney general um, uh, towards the end of last year and this year only I'm talking about January uh, three people close to Bolsonaro have had their homes and offices raided by the federal police and and this yeah. includes. One of the ex uh, former president's son, uh, Carlos Bolsonaro, who's a, who's a councilman in the the city of Rio de Janeiro, which is, which is my city. So and uh, also two other strong allies, both members of Congress of the Brazilian Congress, had their homes raided by the federal police only this month, this month alone. So things are not looking good. Yeah, things are not looking good, and it's really upsetting to see because most of us. When we were looking at Brazil, we were very hopeful for Brazil's future, and then the election took place, and although it's not what most Brazilians expected here in the United States, we didn't expect it at all. I mean, things were on the up. 
in regards to the economy in Brazil when Bolsonaro took over. So it was quite alarming. Now, there's a correlation between the Supreme Court and the pursuit of Bolsonaro. And we're also seeing that here in the United States, but now they're asking our Supreme Court to rule whether President Trump is ineligible uh, to be on the ballot as well. They're trying to say that he's disqualified as well. Is this just... Are there is there any substance to these claims against Bolsonaro or is this just to put somebody in prison who they do not like, they do not agree with and they just want to lock him up? That's what it seems to be here in the United States as well. It's uh, incredible how similar uh, things are. I, 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 I try to say it's the same virus. Uh, just Brazil and the United States have different immune systems. The, the U.S. immune system is way stronger than Brazil's, but it's still the same thing. The idea is that both Donald Trump and Jair Bolsonaro are immensely uh, popular still, and they they probably can't beat him on, on regular elections. Brazil has uh, city elections this year, and Bolsonaro's allies are doing very, very well in the polls. So what they're trying to do is uh, try to maybe put Bolsonaro in jail so he can influence the elections in the United States. The left is trying to use the courts to avoid the people uh, voting for Donald Trump and bringing him back to power. So uh, it's it's the same idea. It's just that Brazilian Supreme Court is way more active than the United States Supreme Court. Uh, We have a justice which is, um, some people heard of him, Alexandre de Moraes is a, is a bald guy that's on the Supreme Court. He looks like a James Bond villain. It's it's so funny. Yes, I think I have a picture uh, of him. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so funny because he looks like a villain. So, um, <laughs> and, and this guy is the de facto dictator of Brazil. So he's the one calling the shots, not even Lula da Silva. The Supreme Court bragged about they they were the one that put Lula da Silva back in power. And when Lula tried to be funny with them, they said, look, we put you, they actually said it on air. It's it's for everyone to check. They actually said, look, we put you in power. So <laughs> don't try anything <laughs> funny. Uh, and, yeah. And, and, and it was the, the, this last raid, that happened on uh, Carlos Bolsonaro's house. It was actually on Bolsonaro's, former president Bolsonaro's house in um, in, the, in a beach of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, it was like his beach beach house. Um, it was, this was, the, the warrant was issued uh, just hours following Bolsonaro's live stream. And Bolsonaro did a live stream with uh, all he, uh, he has three sons that are uh, in, in politics. Uh, one is Carlos Bolsonaro, the one that you are seeing right now uh, mm-hmm. has a, a, another one, which is Eduardo Bolsonaro, very prominent here in the United States. He's a congressman in Brazil. And he has another one, which is Flavio Bolsonaro, who's a senator. And they all four did a, a live stream together. The live, th- the live streaming had five million people watching. And, uh, and and the funny thing is that a week before, Lula canceled his monthly or weekly live stream because nobody was watching. So that's, that shows the difference of popularity among them. And that's maybe that's why they're coming after him. But it was, it was very funny that it happened hours after his first live stream, which was a tremendous success. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot of concerns, too, about Brazil's elections. I know election fraud was, was a big uh, talking matter on when, during the runoff for that because it was quite interesting. But the popularity, like you just cited, it, it's what we have here in the United States. President Joe Biden will do a live stream or put something up on YouTube and he gets a couple of thousand likes or something on it. It's nothing impressive. But then President Donald Trump goes and puts something up and he's got millions of people who are flocking and, and looking. And so that's why the numbers just don't seem to add up when you could actually look at it from a standpoint that doesn't have a machine ballot, a machine counting ballots and all these other crazy things. So it's always interesting when we talk about that because it just doesn't add up. I want to bring up something else. Now, a lot of Americans aren't really familiar with Brazil and the censorship that's going on there. So I wanted to bring that to the front right now. Ultimately, platforms, free speech platforms like Rumble pulled out of Brazil. And now their parent, their sister company, Locals, uh, is also pulling out. We actually have the letter that went out to influencers. So Locals is now leaving Brazil. You're obviously someone with a major influence in Brazil and on Locals. 
What's your reaction to learning that they will no longer be in Brazil? Well, it hits me uh, two ways. One, as a Brazilian, because uh, Brazilians won't be able to access a lot of its content creators. And also, apparently, I was the largest Brazilian uh, creator on, on local. So it's going to hit me hard as well. But the this is this is what happens when you live in a dictatorship. So, um, for example, I had I still have outside of Brazil 1.3 million uh, followers on Twitter, and my mm. Twitter is still blocked in Brazil. If you're in Brazil and you look for my account, you see a message from Twitter saying this account was withheld by by a court demand in Brazil, and so you won't be able to access in Brazil. Although if you're outside of Brazil, in any country. Uh, including Venezuela, uh, you'll be able to see my Twitter account normally. So what happened was that uh, the Supreme Court of Brazil issued several orders for locals asking them to remove certain content creators, uh, myself among them. And instead of following order, following these orders, Rumble and now locals, they decided to say, well, after you were leaving this banana republic, this pretty much what they said. Um, and we're not going to comply with any crazy orders. We don't remove content from creators. We're in favor of free speech. And and uh, it's so sad that Brazil's under this situation. We hope the court reconsiders, uh, reconsiders it uh, one day. And I think it was a bold, uh, it was a bold move. Uh, mm -hmm. They gave up some revenue, I'm sure, because Brazil's market is pretty strong in terms of social media. But it, I... Although it was not beneficial for me personally, I think it was uh, at least a, a, a courageous move on their part. And who knows, maybe if Elon Musk does the same or at least he start uh, caring about Brazil and speaking out about Brazil a little bit, maybe he'll help uh, influencing the situation. Because right now, the first thing that we need is that the world needs to understand that by any metrics, Brazil is not a democracy. We can't have like Bill Myers uh, saying, praising Brazil, praising what's happening there. No one in their all, all sane mind can say that censoring journalists, um, censoring a political uh, opposition is part of the uh, of a democracy. It's not. It's not. And anytime they come out and say that we need to defend democracy or any of those key terms, it's usually a red flag for me because that's usually what they say when they're doing the exact opposite. They're not defending democracy. They're actually leading a dictatorship in most cases. And we're seeing that here in the United States. And it's disturbing. I really hope Elon Musk comes out and, and does speak up because they shouldn't be doing business in Brazil as well. But then also on, on the other side of this, the Brazilian people are really losing out and they are the ones victims of the censorship campaign. Paula, when Brazilians are looking for truth, do they have any media outlets available at this point? Well, they still have some uh, brave people. You have the OS magazine. Uh, you have the uh, uh, Gazeta do Povo newspaper. But even them, they have to watch out. They can't. They they can't speak up uh, freely. They have to uh, censor a little bit of what they're saying. And mm -hmm. what's what's happening is that more more and more Brazilians are having to recur to VPNs to access content from creators like myself. Yeah. Yeah, it's disturbing and it shouldn't be taking pay plays. Paulo Figueredo, thank you so much for jumping on with us. Again, head over to his Rumble page, support him, his local page. Make sure you support him because that's how you push back against these type of things. I mean, really appreciate you joining us today to discuss these issues. Thank you, Paulo. Hey everyone, I'm getting ready to head out right now, but before I go, I always have to put on some deodorant. And I used to look all the time for the best deodorant. I couldn't find it on the shelves at all until our good friends over at Give a Derm came out with a brand new deodorant. This one's called Pits Me Off. It's incredible. Watch this, it's super easy. Ta-da, and that's all you need. And it dries super quick. Obviously, I'm wearing black. There's no white residue left over. It's a natural deodorant. It's made right here in the USA. There's none of those Chinese harmful chemicals also included in it. It's giveaderm.com, and then use the promo code Brianna for 10% off. You gotta try it. I wanna let our audience in on a little secret. I'm saving hundreds of dollars each year after switching over both of my lines to Patriot Mobile. Yes, yeah, so now my business and personal line 
are with Patriot Mobile. Now, Patriot Mobile uses the same towers that you're probably already using now, except it's less expensive. So my 5G towers that I love to use my old provider, I'm still using them now. I'm just paying significantly less money to do so. And on top of it all, Patriot Mobile believes in the same things you and I believe in. They have the same morals. So they donate to causes that are like pro-life causes, veteran causes, and even the NRA. It's incredible. So I highly recommend you head over to PatriotMobile.com right now. Take a look at their plans and sign up. And today, if you sign up and use promo code Brianna, they're going to waive the activation fee. Yes, you heard it right. They're going to waive the activation fee. Just make sure you use promo code Brianna, B-R-E-A-N-N-A. And if you enjoyed that segment, make sure you hit that like button. And if you want to see the news before it becomes the news, you have to subscribe to our channel. And well, if you have a liberal friend that you're looking to save, make sure you share this content with them.